One of the most contentious verses in all of Scripture between Jehovah's Witnesses and Christians is John 1.1. 1, 1. Christians believe that the verse is properly translated and the word was God, while the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the verse is properly rendered and the word was a God. Now, it's very common for a Jehovah's Witness to say that Greek grammar does not allow for the Christian translation of that verse. And generally speaking, they will offer you one or a combination of these five arguments that I will be discussing in this video. The first, and incidentally the most common objection that I've heard to the Christian rendering of John 1.1, goes along the lines of something like this. The Greek word for God, theos, in this verse is not preceded by a definite article. Therefore, it should not be rendered as God, it should be rendered as a God. Now, just as a matter of full disclosure, Jehovah's Witnesses will commonly say this. However, the Watchtower knows better and doesn't actually teach this. It's very common in the New Testament for the word theos to not be preceded by a definite article and still be translated as God and not a God. Just to give you a few verses, one would be John chapter 1 verse 6, John chapter 1 verse 12, John chapter 1 verse 18. So this argument is absolutely fallacious. Another objection that's commonly offered by individual Jehovah's Witness goes something like this. Well, Jesus might be called Theos, but he's never called Ha-Theos or Theos with a definite article. Only Jehovah is called Ha-Theos. And this argument is equally fallacious. Not only is Jesus called Ha-Theos in John 20:28. 20, Satan is called Ha-Theos in 2 Corinthians 4. For the next three objections, I'm going to put up a verse on the screen that Christians and Jehovah's Witnesses both agree is translated properly. It's 1 John 4, 8, because God is love. The reason that I'm putting up this verse is is because it has the same grammatical components that John 1.1c has. It has one conjunction, one definite article, two nouns, and a verb. And as each one of these supposed grammatical rules come up, let's apply it to this verse and see what happens. I've been told many times that because the word theos in John 1.1 1, 1 is a nominative noun that does not have a definite article preceding it, it should be translated as a God. But if we look at our parallel verse, the word agape is also a nominative noun that is not preceded by a definite article. So if we were to be consistent in applying this supposed grammatical rule, the verse would read, because God is a love. But certainly nobody translates that verse that way. Why? Because that's not a Greek grammatical rule. And yet another objection goes along the lines of something like this. The theos in John 1.1 1, 1 is a predicate noun that is not preceded by a definite article. Therefore, it should be translated as a god. However, if we once again go and take a look at our parallel verse, we see that the word agape is also a predicate noun not preceded by a definite article. And how does the Watchtower translate it? not like they do in John 1.1. 1, 1. Once again, why? Because it's not a rule of Greek grammar. Lastly, let me get to the argument that the Watchtower actually makes. The Watchtower claims that because the word theos in John 1.1 1, 1 is a predicate nominative noun that lacks the definite article yet precedes the verb, for that reason, it should be translated as a God. Yet, if we go to our parallel verse once again, we see that the word agape is a nominative predicate noun that lacks the definite article, and it also precedes the verb. Yet, as I've stated over and over again, the Watchtower does not translate it as a love. 
So next time a Jehovah's Witness comes to your door and says that the rules of Greek grammar do not allow for the Christian translation of John 1.1, 1, 1, show them 1 John 4.8 and ask them why the Watchtower is making up Greek grammatical rules and then not even following them.